All right. Good morning, everyone. It's great to uh, see you all here on this fine Sunday morning uh, before we move into August and uh, the fall of the year is getting closer and closer for those of you who aren't able to be here with us today but are at home or out and away or getting ready to travel somewhere, wherever uh, it may be. Thank you uh, for taking some time to put us on your phone or your tablet or your TVs or, or any of that good stuff. I want to uh, share a, a, a few things today, and there's a lot of upcoming stuff. So it's like summertime allows you the chance to have a bit of a reprieve and slow down a little bit, and then it really starts gearing up for the fall. So there's a lot of things um, that are going to be uh, coming up um, in the, just the, the next few weeks, and I want to share some of those uh, with you today. But before I do that, uh, I want to share with you um, Jim Draghi. Um, I, I saw Hans yesterday uh, when we were down at the Pumpkin Patch a little bit, um, and he had stopped out at West River to see Jim. And uh, he was asking me, well, did Jim go home? Did Jim get released? No, Jim did not. But Jim is no longer in his room if you've gone to saw him. He's, he's now transferred and is residing in the legacy unit at, at West River. So if you go to see him, uh, you need to, to go to, to that area. And he'd be happy uh, to see you as well. And then also, uh, David, um, at uh, Heart to Heart, our hospice, um, continues to appreciate and uh, want uh, prayers uh, to Marilyn and her entire family as he continues his journey. We offer support for him today. The Zion Otters outing is coming up and is just about here. Carl would like to come up and speak to you all. Uh, because he wants to shorten my time preaching. So a lot of you last week, we got out 10 minutes, don't have to agree so quickly. Uh, you didn't even know you were not here. Like, I hope that happens. I hope that happens. Uh, we got out 10, mer 10 minutes early last week, and a lot of you said, thank you for letting us out 10 minutes early last week. That doesn't mean you can go 10 minutes over next week. I remembered that. Carl? Good morning. Get rid of the glare for you. Put on my otter's hat. <laughs> uh, there's a few things. The otter's outing's coming up Friday. I've got tickets here today to distribute after the church. So uh, we'll uh, be ready to get those. So stop by and see me. Uh, one thing we did get this year, we're having a tent picnic out in left field there. And you can see in the lower left-hand corner there, the otters have agreed to open that gate right there by our picnic so we anybody coming here attending can get in through that gate if you feel challenged by the walk from the front gate on like maybe marvy was watching the olympics all day and got really worn out <laughs> he he could have ruthie drop him off there at the gate and then when she found a parking place by the stockyard, she could go in the front gate if she wanted to. But uh, at any rate, you can enter either gate with your tickets. And in my envelopes, I got tickets and blue wristbands for all the adults. They didn't give me tickets for the under five this year, but I've got purple wristbands in there for them. So... Uh, you can get those, and the, they told me the young ones can get in, walk in with no problem. So, at any rate, see me after the church today and get your tickets, and we'll look forward to a good time on Friday. Awesome. I good think job. I'm going to challenge Jeff to a hot dog eating contest. Let's do it. Seventh inning stretch. <laughs> me and you? Yeah. All right. That's right. That's right. I like it. I like it. For those of you, uh, Butch, if you're watching uh, from home, um, You've mentioned to me about walking in the gate. Uh, that gate is on the north side of the stadium, and um, feel free to use that if it, if it helps you out. The uh, senior lunches uh, will will start and will be ready to go on the eighth of August. That'll be at eleven o'clock here at the church. There's a guest speaker. You can see Han Hannah Thomas is her name. Uh, she's going to be talking about uh, the history of Willard Library and all that stuff that that comes with. Uh, that place there. Special meeting on August 4th uh, following worship. That's next Sunday. And um, what we would like and we would invite all of you to do is to join uh, the, the solar research team. I think that's the, the best way to, 
to talk about them. They are uh, going to be able to hand all of you today, at least we have 50 copies, so take one uh, per family. If we need to make a few more, we will. We uh, worked really hard, Patrick did, um, and, and the committee, to put together a frequently asked questions uh, packet that might help you with some things that you might be thinking concerning such a project. Um, we would also then invite you to join us next Sunday following worship in the Sunday School Hall. Here's, here's our plan. Much like we do for confirmation, uh, we're going to gather at 11, right after church. We want to keep you, and we invite you for about 45 minutes. That way we're done, and we can get everybody out, and, and you can still make it to lunch at a decent time. doesn't really alter your day greatly. And it'll pro provide you an opportunity first uh, to hear Carl, who was just up here talking about our otters tickets, to explain some of the uh, financial factors that go into the choices that are being made concerning the number of solar panels, the solar panel uh, possibilities, what they can and can't do for us, uh, by looking at some of the financials of our own church. Patrick, then, will be able to share with all of you some of the options that we're looking at, which include um, a, a roof mount system and a ground mount system, and potentially because technology changes rather quickly, not necessarily with the panel, but where we might be able to put the panel is a very interesting proposal that one of the uh, companies that we worked with concerning a covered parking area at the end of the parking lot with solar panels on it, which would provide us uh, um, our uh, electrical source. Again, it doesn't take any gas out of, uh, of our budget, but it takes the majority of our electrical costs out of our budget. Um, I know that I can't explain all of that to you right now in, in, a, in a great way, but we can at least take some time to do that next week. One of the other things that, that, that I want to mention to you, because one of the big questions that has come to me over the last several weeks is, what does something like this cost? And there's a lot of different numbers that have been thrown around. Depending on the way we go, it's going to be in the ballpark of what it cost us to do the playground. So it is not going to be $200,000. This isn't a $300,000 project. This is somewhere between sixty and one hundred and ten, maybe one hundred and twenty thousand dollar project. When it's all said and done, we'd love to share more of that information with you uh, next week when we can give you and put some things in your hand and put some things on screens. That all leads us to the semiannual congregational meeting, where you're going to help us decide: Do we continue to move forward? Do we start a capital campaign like we did for the uh, playground? Or is the project done? You will help us decide that as a congregation. And we want that from you. Uh, we want that from, from everyone, and, and we want that feedback. But we're doing the best we can, and we're going to try really, really hard to get you all the information you might need um, in preparation for that. One of the other things that will be happening at the semi-annual congregational meeting is the cemetery board. Uh, we'll have a, a brief report and election of, a, of an officer or two. I don't know, are you doing one or two officers? Just one officer. Um, is the possibility of removing all of the bushes that kind of line the, uh, the, the cemetery back here and to put in a nice um, black, looks like wrought iron fencing with some different capstone. Uh, Larry has brought a piece of that. If you go out back and look, there's a piece of that fence setting um, up against some of the bushes, which won't be there. That hedge will be removed if we choose to move forward that way with the capstone that would be used on the brick. If you want to take a look at that uh, when you're leaving today, we would welcome you to, to make your way out there and, and take a look at all of that. Fantasy football is getting ready to go. Uh, we're going to try to do an event. If you'd like to um, do it live, is to uh, join us um, at this fantasy football. Uh, the, ben Lingenfelter has, has won this event for a number of who, who won last year, though, Hans? Calvin Crace was our winner last year. Um, if you haven't been in the Fantasy Football League, we, we, we'd love you to join. Um, Hans is the person to talk to. And then also on the 17th, Relay for Life will take place in New Harmony. Starts at 10 o'clock in the morning, 
and uh, we'll conclude uh, that evening uh, with, with a walk and all the, the luminaries and things like that. See Hans or see Nancy Dugan if you have any questions or anything you want to learn about the Relay for Life. I'm not sure. <clears throat> this slide um, right here goes along with a continuing education event that, that I was a part of this week um, with the American Federation for Suicide Prevention. One of the things that I um, wanted to include today was uh, an opportunity for us to know where some of those resources are. One of the other things that happened this week, which was unpredictable, uh, we didn't know that it would take place, um, you never know when something like that. Uh, Adam uh, Kendall had a good friend, his name was Jason. Um, I think this was, was it Thursday? Thursday night. Um, you told me he was like 32, 39 years old, uh, chose to commit suicide. Um, about five months ago, there was a, a sophomore at Gibson Southern High School committed suicide. Um, this isn't something that only happens occasionally. It's one of the leading causes of death for males ages 15 to 39. And um, I share this with you today because you might want to search it out yourself. You may have a friend. You may have a, an, an issue in your own life. Um, go first to the American Federation for Suicide Prevention, and it will take you to a lot of great resources. In this particular resource, there's a wonderful video that we were going to show that we decided not to today of a, a daughter and a father having a discussion at a dining room table, kitchen table, and he's talking about some of the mental health issues he's been dealing with, and she's talking. Very pretty, pretty powerful video. Um, if you haven't had an incident of suicide in your life with your family, um, it may not mean a lot to you, but you probably know somebody, or you probably are aware of someone that has, their, their lives have been affected uh, due to uh, something like this. So I encourage you to, to check some of that information out if you feel like it is something that uh, you would find useful. The last thing that I want to mention today is an announcement on, eight, on August 6th. I'll, I'll get this up on some slides, but there is a, a sheriff's night out in Cynthiana from 6 to 8 p.m., so it's not a long commitment. Irma had some volunteers. Um, I don't know where, where did Irma go. There, you're way in the back. You're moving around on us. Um, she had some volunteers with her last, last year. Cynthiana Park, you're handing out some food. It's all about law enforcement appreciation and, and things like that. It's a national event, uh, but August 6th from 6 to 8 p.m. If you'd like more information on that, Irma uh, would be happy to share more of that with you. Yes? Yeah. I do. Yeah, I usually just, I just don't share all that private information. <laughs> yeah, he's at the Legacy Unit, and um, you can see him or talk with Carol Joe, and they'll um, be able to tell you all about uh, his time this week. We hope you enjoy the worship service today. There's a very, very special guest here today that I can't announce right now, that I don't want to announce right now, but you're going to meet in, in about 10 minutes. So we don't have a countdown clock to go with here, but about 10 minutes from now, you're going to be introduced to an incredible, wonderful, inspirational young man that uh, I think uh, will uh, inspire us all in all kinds of different ways. But before we do that, Jolene's going to do that with her prelude music this morning. Jolene.
Thank you very, very much. I'd like for you to join with me in a prayer before we sing our opening hymn. If you would be willing to do that together, we offer these words. Awesome God, you knew us before we were born. You'd love us into life. Open our hearts and our spirits today to hear your words for us. And upon hearing the word, may we be convinced of your call to ministry and mission through the church. Bless us with your presence and your powerful love. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. What's going on down here? Look. nice. Please be seated. Superheroes, let's come on down and spend some time up here with me. All right. Let's come all the way from the balcony. All that good stuff. Would anybody like to help me with the offering today? You want to help me? Okay. Tyson, would you be willing to help me today? All right. Thank you. Thank you very much. Not right now. Anybody else want to help me up here? Anybody help me over here? Okay. All right. There you go. Somebody help him out. Good morning. How is everybody today? Good? Good? You're not probably going to want to be over there too far. Let me ask you a question before we go any further. Have you ever met somebody in your life that inspired you? No? Okay. Have you ever met somebody in your life that made you happy? 
Have you ever met somebody or have somebody in your life that loves you? Have you ever had somebody in your life that loved you even if you did something that was naughty? Yeah. Have you ever had someone or a friend that just you wanted to be around them all the time because you liked them so much? You ever have a best friend? Well, today you're going to meet somebody that I think is going to be an incredible inspiration to you in a very, 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 very special way. I'm not going to introduce him to you. Miss Jolly is, is going to introduce him to you. But before we do that, we're going to let her come out here. I'm going to turn the mic over to her, and then I want you to give her some very, very close attention. Let's set this up. Let's be careful we don't knock any of that down. Here we go. You got it. It's me. I'm the inspiration. <laughs> <laughs> also, it's Yay. Jo also, it's Jolene, not Jolene. Okay. What is it? What'd I say? Okay, I quit. I'm out. All right. Why don't you take the whole service then? Let's get over. Why am I nervous? Did I say scared. Jolly? I'm, it's, it's a Jolly. My mic's still I'm on. I'm hoping that you all here can help me draw the perfect doll. Okay? So I'm going to need you to tell me what to do. What do we start with? The head. You're going to be so impressed with my drawing skills. Okay? Here's his head. Okay?
Wayne's in trouble. Wrigley Wayne Willett, what do you notice about Wrigley? What's different about him? He can't see. He doesn't have any eyeballs. <laughs> right, I think he's the perfect boy. He's the perfect dog. Yes, he's poking me. Brian, is he not the most handsome thing you have ever seen? Isn't he cute? So Greg has Greg has a picture of what Wrigley used to look like. This, this is what Wrigley used to look like. If, I don't know if you guys can see it from up here, but up projector. That's what Wrigley Wayne looked like when we adopted him. <laughs> and he ended up getting what's called glaucoma, where his, his, he had a lot of pressure in his eyes and it was causing him a lot of pain. And we tried eye drops and all kinds of stuff and it just wasn't working. So the vet I did. Removed, his, removed his eyeballs, as odd as that sounds. So anyway, if you think about these two dogs, okay, the two dogs that we drew. <laughs> which one do you think God loves more? Do you think God loves this guy more? Or this guy more? Both? I would agree with that. Yeah. So, even though Brinkley may not be completely perfect, I think he's even more handsome now. But even though Brinkley, you may not look at him and think he's perfect, but my goodness, God sure thinks he's perfect. Thank you for our imperfections. 
Thank you for loving us. We love you too. Amen.
All right, let's read uh, a couple passages today from Isaiah and then also from Mark. First from Isaiah, chapter 64. Oh, that you would burst from the heavens and come down. How the mountains would quake in your presence, and yet, O Lord, you are our Father. We are the clay, you are the potter. We are all formed by your hand. Don't be so angry with us, Lord. Please don't remember our sins forever. Look at us, we pray, and see that we are all your people. And then reading from the Gospel of Mark. At that time, after the anguish of those days, the sun will be darkened and the moon will give no light. The stars will fall from the sky, and the powers in the heavens will be shaken. Then everyone will see the Son of Man coming on the clouds with a great power and, gr and great glory. And he will send out his angels to gather his chosen ones from all over the world, from the farthest ends of the earth and heaven. So learn a lesson from the fig tree. When its branches bud and its leaves begin to sprout, you know that summer is near. Yet in the same way... You see all these things taking place. You can know that his return is very near, right at the door. I tell you the truth. This generation will not pass from the scene before all these things take place. Heaven and earth will disappear, but my words will never disappear. However, no one knows the day or the hour when these things will happen. Not even the angels in heaven or the Son himself. Only the Father knows. And since you don't know when that time will come, be on guard and stay alert. Here is our reading from both the Older and the Newer Testament, from Isaiah and the Gospel of Mark. It's not a lectionary text. Um, it was a divergence uh, from some of the lectionary texts that, that we've been following through the summer. This particular message that I want to share this morning comes based on a conversation that I had early in the week. Um, with um, a, a, a couple different people. And it based, it, the, those conversations, ironically, were focused on feeling like it's hard to believe some days. It's hard to have faith some days. It's sometimes easier to not believe than to believe in some greater power, greater God. In our secular context, in our secular world, I believe we are moving through some of those shifts. And there is a, a pervasive, even in many ways now, socially supported sense that for many of us, we feel alone. We're here to fend for ourselves, right? We're left to our own devices. We are to pull ourselves up by our own bootstraps, so to speak. We're to be the self-made people that we are ultimately to become. We are omnipotent. We are omniscient. We are that omnipresence in the world. And for so many, at least in some of the conversations that I had this week and what I've been feeling, something to believe in seems to be harder and harder to find. Here's that conversation. A person that I've known for many years doesn't really attend church anymore. Great person. Really involved in the community. Really involved in socially driven issues. Really involved in volunteerism. All of those things. And as a part of this conversation, the question came up about just going to church. And they said, you know, I've just found as I've gotten older, I kind of grew out of my childhood faith, and my adult faith self doesn't need church anymore. I've kind of grown out of my childhood faith, and my adult self doesn't need church anymore. Those stories that once captured me no longer make sense like they used to. And in many cases, 
ceased to make sense. And some of them aren't even believable anymore, they said. Don't get me wrong. I still believe in God. I still believe in the Spirit. I still believe in all of those things. Church just doesn't do that for me anymore. In the midst of all of that and those feelings, and some of you may feel the same. You would have to. What once worked as a child doesn't necessarily work as an adult, right? Bad things do happen to good people. God sometimes does give you things that feel like it is too much to handle. And there's so much bad news. There can't be good news. Because if there's good news in one place, there's got to be bad news in another. And it just seems to try to balance itself out. And in, in, in North America, we still say that we are an abundance of believers. We're, we're, we, we answer that question with so much energy, the rates make us look like we are an incredibly religious country, especially in comparison to other countries. But in surveys and polls, there's also high numbers of people that report they go to church at a rate that, frankly, makes churches seem like they should be as full as they are on Christmas and Easter. And I'm not sure about the accuracy of some of those polls or those answers, if they're truly being given. I subscribe to a lot of newsletters, and I get a lot of information from different conferences in the United Church of Christ, Indiana, Kentucky Conference, South Dakota Conference, Nebraska Conference. Kansas, Oklahoma conference, um, all of those conferences. And among many of the things that they continue to talk about includes information about congregations that continue to struggle. So many so that it seems it's threatening the current way we organize the United Church of Christ, which prompted me to think about has changes continued to happen across the religious spectrum for all faith communities there was a recent Pew Research survey poll that speaks to that very issue. And, and I, I just want to show some of this to you. In this poll, you can see the number of Americans who say religion's influence is declining um, is as high as it's ever been. And so back in 2002, approximately 52% felt that way. 37% felt like it was gaining influence. In this February poll... 18% feel as if religion is gaining influence, and 80% now believe that it's losing influence. Kind of goes to the conversation that was had about my childhood faith doesn't necessarily match up with my adult faith. And then this, this other part of this poll. Views on the church-state separation in the United States as a Christian nation. Pew Research says that the percentage of United States adults who say that the federal government should stop enforcing, neither, no opinion, or enforce the separation of church and straight, according to their poll, 55% says it should remain separate. And the percentage of U.S. adults who say the federal government should declare Christianity as the official religion of the United States comes in at 13%. And 44% and 39% said it should not declare Christianity or should not declare Christianity as the official religion of the United States and should not promote those moral values. 44% feel like it should promote those Christian moral values. And so sometimes I think it's easy for us, the, the church choir that gathers on Sunday mornings, to feel like everything is what it is because of what we do when there's a lot of different variations outside of church walls. But here's the awesome thing that I feel about our faith. This is only part of the story. It's not the entire book. It's not the novel. It's not the series. This is just one aspect of what and who we are and what our faith looks like and has the power to overcome. Because I believe God can continue to break into things anytime, any place, anywhere. God can work differently than God worked last year or the year before or 20 years before. God can touch your life and inspire your life in an incredibly different way than God did as you were a child. And so my challenge to the person that I was speaking with was this. Why are you relying on your childhood faith as an adult? And why and what happened to your faith that it didn't grow? 
with you into adulthood. So maybe some of that is what's going on. Maybe it's a transition that we continue to move through in our history together. Maybe this is something that the writers of Isaiah and Micah and Joel and the Psalms and Mark and the prophets were feeling. Unsure in the moment, but sure of the foundation on which they were grounded. And so as I listened and read this week, I realized again, though we certainly haven't figured it all out here at Zion Church, nor should we ever claim that we have, we have a lot to be thankful for. New people. There is always new faces here on Sunday morning. Not that they're members, but that have come to visit, whether they're with family or they just came to check in. There's new programs and there's new opportunities just on the horizon. There are new traditions that are seeking to break through here and now. Those are a little harder. Those take a little more time. But in the midst of all that stuff, in the midst of all that journey, in the midst of all of those feelings, it's important for us to not get caught up in those polls only and those conversations only but as I mentioned to Steve this morning, to seek a balance in our faith. Because with every bit of bad news, there is good news. I believe there are signs all around us that God continues to break through. God continues to find ways to break into our lives. So I'd like you to join me today in a church project. Are you willing to help me with something? <clears throat> it's not a hard thing. You're all like, well, tell us what it is first. <laughs> we don't know what we're getting into. Could you explain it a little bit? Could you talk about it a little bit? Yes, I will. Beginning today, I want you to work with me to try to identify all sorts of ways that you feel God is breaking into the world today. Our communities, our world, our own personal lives. Find ways where God is showing up. God sightings, so to speak. How is God noticeable and is making a difference? I want you to set a time. I want you to look back. I want you to reflect upon your day. Pay attention for at least 24 hours from now. And also keep sending reminders to keep us focused. So if you struggle with this, here's a tip. Pay closest attention where you find your life to be the most unmanageable. Because I think that's where God continues to break in in the most prevalent way. And when you come up with a sighting, when you come up with something, jot it down for me. Whenever you think God is breaking in, write it out. Scribble it on something, text it to me, send it to me, post it somewhere. Or better yet, here's where you really, 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 really can help me. So for those of you that are here visiting, those of you that have traveled in and are going to be leaving and going back to your homes, or those of you that are online and don't visit with us here in the sanctuary but worship with us, you can text those to me. We're 125 days away from the beginning of Advent. We have 125 days until we begin the Christmas season. 125 days. And what we've done is we've created an area on the bulletin board in the foyer entitled God Sightings. Next to that little area on the bulletin board, you'll see in a bowl, small two-by-two two approximately pieces of paper, different colors, and a pin holder for you to jot down your God sightings and pin them to the bulletin board. And we'll do that up to Advent. If there gets to be too many of them, we'll expand the God sighting area. The thing that is holding the pins that I would like you to write on was made by Mr. Norman Schrader. Yes, it was. You were in, that's when you were in the shop and you were making stuff. You got, 
you and Sharon's wedding date on there, I believe. Um, do what? Well, it has, but I, st but I still have it. And it sat on my desk and it held my pins. And that is one of my first God sightings. You made that for me. I remembered it was a pleasure uh, for me to receive it. I had nothing to do with it. You're like, here you go, take it. You made all the kids those tool little tote things. You get fired up when I talk about that little church on the hill and, and we're comparing ourselves to big, big churches, right? You're like, dang right, I'm not going to say the word again. I got in a little bit of trouble what I said last night when I said I don't give a dang. Um, um, pe people didn't like that so much. So what I want you to think about is, where's the difference God's making today? In the midst of the bad news, in the midst of everything that says you can't do this, you shouldn't do that, I don't care what other places are doing. I don't care what other people are doing. I care about what we're doing and how it positively affects this community of faith wherever we have the opportunity to have influence and the ways in which we work together to make the communities in the world in which we live a better place. That's what I care about. I don't want to compare ourselves to anybody else. I don't want to be like everybody else. I want to be like us and what we decide together to do. So help me out. Just help me out and document with me all the ways that God's Spirit quietly and loudly enters into and touches our lives in so many wonderful and awesome and incredible ways. And I think if we can do that together and we do it consistently, we can continue to find something to believe in. Amen. Would you please join with me this morning in just a short prayer. Dear gracious God, we pray today that you grant us the ability to come from a place of gratitude. As we heal ourselves and we think about what we can do to take part of that self-healing of our world, our communities, and our own personal lives, we, we reach out today through prayer of, for healing for those that need it, for families that have been devastated uh, this past week through, through suicide and death, for those that have um, had their lives changed uh, as their health continues to move in a way that isn't always uh, a positive direction. Help us to find ways that we can nurture our own inner peace, and by doing so, bring peace to others around us. We offer this prayer in Jesus' name, and when together we also offer these words. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. We're going to sing a fun song here at the end, I hope, when we all get to heaven. Jolene was willing to help me out and find this music, so I invite you to stand as we join together and sing our way out of here this morning.
right, before you leave, if you turn around and look at that clock, it's not correct. It's 1101, .01, all right? <laughs> Don't be looking at that clock. Somebody needs to reset it or put a new battery in it because we're not that far over. For those of you that are joining us tomorrow on our youth trip to Holiday World, please join us here at the church at 10 o'clock. For those of you that are interested in picking up some of those solar packet information that we have, there are also some question cards that you'll be able to fill out that we can use at our informational meeting tomorrow. Thank you so much for bringing in Wrigley today. He'll be out in the foyer as well. To everybody who's gathered with us in this sanctuary and for everybody that's gathered with us from home, have an awesome week and have an awesome rest of the day. Worship here this morning at Zion Lippe United Church of Christ has ended at 11.02. Let our service now begin. Amen.